shine, Jesus shine has been one of my favorite song which I often listen to in the morning. Why the song is favorite to me is Jesus is the light of the world and he has said he who walks in the light of Christ will never be in darkness and this is why i have been always trying to walk in the footsteps of jesus christ in his light throughout my life i never wanted to be in the darkness we are called upon to be the light of the world jesus said you are the light of the world today we are the light of the world to put forth the light of Christ in the world through our life of sincerity through our life of selfless service through our life of love through our life of dedication and through our life of sacrifice i have been touched in my life way back when i was a young child to my very parish priest who led a very very simple life he was an example to all of us children and to the faithful in the village parish of mine he called upon all of us to be the light of christ in our home in our village in our surroundings the majority of the people there for other faith he said be true christians let be let the people know that you are christian and why you are living a life of christian of dedication of sacrifice and you go regularly for sacraments regularly for mass regularly for catechism and they be also be led by your good example first example that comes to my mind is my own parish priest to whom i got my vocation to whom i would say i dedicate myself my priesthood second was a sister who was an example in my life a sister who came across when i was working in a hospital who had such a love for the people for the patients for for the workers she gave herself completely for the renewal of the church renewal of our administration renewal of our service and dedication she was an american dedicated to the core of the patients and that is what led me to work for the poor work for the upliftment of the poor and unhealthy and that is what she gave me she said walk in the footsteps of christ and the christ will bless you and that is what made me to dedicate myself long many years in the hospital to work for the poor with grace and mercy. 
the shadows into your radiance. By thy blood I'm into your brightness. So sweet, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Jesus is my Lord and God. Whatever I have and whatever I have been, it is a gift of God to me. And this is why I am always grateful to God and I always have a feeling that I should surrender myself completely to Him into His hands so that He may lift me up. I have the example before me of Jesus himself. Jesus, son of God, who came into this world and surrendered himself to his heavenly father in all that he did. He went about doing good. But at the end of the day, he went and spent his time in prayer, surrendering himself to the heavenly father, to know the will of the father and also get the strength, humanly speaking, from the Heavenly Father. And this is why he surrendered himself. He said, it is the food of mine to do the will of my Father. If to Jesus, it is the food to, the will of, to do the will of God in his life, much more to us human beings, to surrender ourselves and to do the will of God 
is our food of life. On the cross, he said, it is finished. The word, in a word saying, it is finished, he surrendered once again his soul to the Heavenly Father. It's like the Heavenly Father. And we who are the followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus, we Christians in the church, we priests, we faithful, have to surrender ourselves that we may be blessed only by emptying ourselves, surrendering ourselves completely to the Lord will we regain strength, the spiritual strength from the Lord to do our work. Jesus went about doing good because he found the will of the Heavenly Father in surrendering. It is true that many a times when I go for a retreat, when I go for a recollection, when I sit in the church and pray, though I sing this song, I surrender to you completely. Many times I sit back and say, do I really surrender myself? What do I keep back? My attachment for things, to the person, to the places, to the power, surrender, I think myself. And yes, sometimes I feel myself, no, I'm not surrendering myself. I've seen people who have given up everything completely in the hands of the Lord. Let whatever came, come. I have known a priest who told me once, Bishop, post me wherever you want. I have been a priest to work for the church. Send me to a place where no one wants to go. It is the Lord who will take care of me because I have given myself to Him. I, the thought came to my mind, yes, is it? Do I do such way? I have the example sometimes comes before my mind. Example of Paul himself. Paul, who was a Saul at one time, was persecuting Christians. But the moment the Lord touched him, he so much surrendered himself to the Lord, he did not bother what persecutions, what difficulties, what problems, what criticism comes on the way. How? Before his conversion, he fought against Christ and after his conversion, he surrendered himself to the risen Lord completely. As Mother Teresa would always say, it is important that we remain faithful, not how we have succeeded and achieved, but faithfulness is what counts in our life. And whenever you have failed, once again, re surrender yourself so that the Lord accepts our surrender.
Only in the name of Jesus we will have victory. And this is why we call upon the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus which is so precious. The name of Jesus which sanctifies us. The name of Jesus is elevates us and takes us to that heavenly abode because in the name of Jesus we will have victory. It is my duty as Christian, my duty as a priest, my duty as a bishop to call upon the name of Jesus and lift up that name high wherever I can, wherever I am, at every circumstances and I should never feel shy to call upon the name of Jesus. I tell our students to our people that we feel shy sometimes to proclaim the name of Jesus in publicly. And I call upon them, never be shy. Jesus has said, I tell them, if you acknowledge me in the presence of others, I will acknowledge you in the presence of my heavenly Father. Now, what more do you want? Our only ambition in life is that we be acknowledged in the heavenly kingdom by Jesus in, in the presence of his heavenly Father. That is where we want to be one day, to be with the heavenly Father in the heavenly kingdom. And if he accepts us there, that is our final goal. In the year 2008, church in Karnataka was persecuted. And in one of the church, when the police asked youngsters to throw away a small crucifix that he has picked up and not to have any signs, the boy said, I will never not only throw away this crucifix or do anything against Christ, but I will publicly proclaim him. And he said, and this is why I am wearing this cross around my neck. He had the courage and strength to publicly share a boy of high school to publicly who said, I am a Christian, I am a follower of Jesus and I proclaim his name loudly. And we had the similar examples of many, many people at that time standing by the faith, standing by Jesus, proclaiming Jesus. And I would say there are simple people in the village, simple people who publicly say the rosary, make the sign of the cross and also call upon the name. They don't hesitate. They have no inhibition to say they are Christians, they are Catholics. But sometimes we also have today some boys and some girls who under the pressure of peers in the schools and colleges, they hide themselves to be to known as Christians or as Catholics. And I tell these boys and girls, if you do not acknowledge Christ here on earth and proclaim Christ, remember, one day you will not be acknowledged by the Heavenly Father in the Heavenly Kingdom. And so that, remember this, do not hesitate to proclaim faith publicly and be a witness to the publicly and you will be rewarded, though you may be persecuted by your companions or you may have to bear some difficulties in life. Lord, 
Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. We say, hey, oh. I say. Okay, let me hear the ladies. They're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord. Okay, gentlemen, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift. shepherd. He is a loving picture and the theme for me. Jesus is a good shepherd and we are all called upon to be that good shepherd. I always feel happy, felt me that I have laid down my life for you. I have led you to the greener pastures and when you have been in difficulties. I have carried you on my shoulders. And I rejoice when you come back to me. Many a times, like the lost sheep, yes, I have gone astray myself, so to say, not in my occasion difficulties, in my priesthood, in my dedicated life, in my service, yes, but Jesus has been always come in search of me. He has always brought me back to the greener pastures. He has always directed me to the right path. Yes, what is important for all of us is to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. And this is why the Jesus is my Good Shepherd song is dear to me. And also the passage from the Gospel is dear to me because we are all called upon to be that. 